This is the fourth part of our discussion on the complex logarithm. So far, we have defined what is this multivalued function. Basically, we defined it using the fact that it is inverse of the exponential function. Okay? Since the exponential function is not one to one, so that's why its inverse is not a single valued function. In fact, it is a multivalued function. Over here, uh, this n is any uh, integer, and uh, when we vary n, then it gives us uh, the many outputs of this function. Now, if we take n is equal to 0, then it gives us the principal value of the logarithm or the principal branch of this multivalued function. Okay. So far, we have discussed uh, the continuity and differentiability of this single valued function, which is the principal value of the logarithm. Now, in this uh, discussion, we are going to uh, further extend uh, the properties or knowledge about the properties of this principal value of the logarithm and logarithm function. So, one of the uh, important properties is basically, uh, of course, uh, we are talking about in real analysis, when we talk about uh, logarithm function of the real numbers, then uh, this is the property that we often use. And now we are curious that whether this property holds in the case of uh, complex numbers or not. So, in other words, we want to know whether log of z1 into z2 is equal to log of z1 plus log of z2. And also, we want to know that whether uh, uh, log of z1 over z2 is equal to log of z1 minus log of z2. Okay, so fortunately, these properties also hold uh, in the case of complex numbers. Okay, so the proof of uh, this thing is uh, very simple. So we are just going to use the definition and starting from this side. Okay, so log of z1, z2, just using the definition, it's going to be natural log of the modulus of z1, z2 plus outer uh, argument of z1, z2. So this is going to be equal to log of modulus of z1, modulus of z2, okay, uh, plus iota argument of z1 plus argument of z2. Over here, uh, we can easily notice that uh, we are using uh, the property that argument of z1 into z2 is equal to argument of z1 plus argument of z2. So basically, we are using uh, this property, and then this implies this is going to be equal to. So since uh, uh, this modulus of z1 is a real number, modulus of z2 is a real number, so we can uh, write it down in the following way: log of uh, modulus of z1 plus log of modulus of z2 plus iota argument of z1 plus iota argument of z2. Okay, now here uh, if we combine these terms, so this one with this one and uh, this term with this term, so what do we get? So log of z2 plus iota argument of z2. Okay, and uh, plus log of z1 plus iota argument of z2. Okay, now uh, this becomes, of course, this is uh, nothing uh, but uh, log of z1. Okay, and uh, this is uh, nothing but uh, the, this is small l. Okay, so log of z. Of course, uh, this can be uh, written in the following way. So it is equal to log of z1 plus log of z. So that's how uh, we proved uh, this property using this definition. Okay. Now uh, moving on to the next property. So the next property can be easily uh, proved following the same line. Now uh, this was all about uh, the multivalued function logarithm. Now let's talk about uh, the principal value of the logarithm, whether this property holds uh, in the case of the principal value of the logarithm or not. So this is the question mark and unfortunately the answer is no, it does not hold. Then the question arises under what conditions uh, this property holds. Okay, so conditions under which if there exist. Okay, so if there exist uh, conditions, then what are the conditions under which above holds? 
so this is our uh, next aim okay and uh, fortunately we are able to find the conditions uh, but uh, before going on to uh, the conditions let's observe what is really happening and what is really going wrong in this case and why this property does not hold now uh, let's discuss uh, this example where z1 is minus 1 z2 is minus 2 and uh, whether this condition hold in this case or not okay for that uh, we just uh, calculate uh, the values okay so now let's first calculate the principal logarithm value of minus 1 so using this definition this is going to be equal to log of the modulus of uh, minus 1 plus iota uh, the principal value of the logarithm uh, the principal value of this minus 1 okay so what is the principal value of uh, this uh, complex number minus 1 now we we see that where is minus 1 so minus 1 is somewhere over there and over here uh, we can easily see that uh, the principal value uh, of um, its uh, uh, argument is going to be equal to pi so this is going to be equal to uh, so we know that uh, log of 1 is 0 so we are just going to write it down out of pi okay so this is the principal uh, value of the logarithm of minus 1 and similarly we can calculate that log of minus 2 is going to be equal to log of minus 2 plus iota principal argument of minus 2 and in this case we can see that this is going to be equal to uh, natural log of 2 plus iota pi okay and uh, now if we multiply if we calculate what is z1 z2 so z1 z2 is going to be equal to uh, 2 okay and in this case what is the principal value of the logarithm of z1 z2 now 2 lies on the positive side of the real axis okay so uh, the principal value uh, of the argument is going to be equal to 0 and uh, hence in this case it becomes natural log of just 2 now we can easily uh, see that when we add uh, these two values okay so this value and uh, this value which is uh, the principal value of the logarithm of minus 1 okay so when we add these two values then apart from uh, log of 2 we get uh, iota 2 pi and over here we, there is no iota 2 pi so what is uh, really happening so uh, it happens uh, that when we uh, add these two uh, values uh, then basically its argument uh, escapes uh, the range minus pi to pi and that's why uh, we, we are not getting as we expected okay so if we hold uh, the value between minus pi and pi so in other words if uh, uh, this principal argument of z1 plus principal argument of z2 lies between minus pi and pi then uh, this condition is true okay so this is our next result and the proof uh, once again is going to be uh, very simple okay so uh, the first part is uh, very simple so given okay so if we are given that principal value of the logarithm z1 z2 is equal to the principal value of logarithm of z1 plus principal log of z2 then we need to show that so we need to show that uh, this uh, argument of z1 the principal argument of z1 plus principal argument of z2 lies between minus pi and pi of course minus pi is not included so uh, let's start from here which is our given information so starting from here we can easily uh, see that log of uh, z1 z2 is going to be equal to using of course the, the definition the natural log of uh, z1 uh, z2 plus iota uh, the argument the principal argument of z1 z okay and uh, uh, using this uh, left hand uh, right hand side so the principal value of the logarithm of z1 plus principal log of z2 is going to be equal to natural log of z1 plus Iota principal argument of z1. Okay, this is uh, the value of log of z1 plus log of z2, the modulus of uh, z2 plus iota, the principal argument of z2. Okay, so now since uh, it is given that uh, these two values are equal, now let's compare these values. So over here 
this is equal to this plus this okay so log of uh, modulus of z1 modulus z2 is equal to log of modulus of z1 plus modulus of z2 so what is left so we are we are left with uh, these numbers so this number must be equal to this plus this okay so since they are equal so it is given that they are equal so this implies uh, argument of z1 z2 is equal to argument of z1 plus argument of z and since uh, this is the principal argument uh, of a complex number which is multiplication of two complex numbers so uh, and it lies between minus pi and pi so that's why this number lies between minus pi and pi so in a very simple way we have proved that this uh, value uh, the argument of principal argument of z1 plus principal argument of z2 lies between minus pi and pi and of course minus pi is not included now uh, let's have a look at the converse part so conversely assume that okay now we assume that uh, this uh, condition holds the principal argument of z1 plus principal argument of z2 lies between minus pi and pi minus pi not included and what do we need to show so we need to show that so the principal logarithm of z1 z2 is equal to log of z1 plus the principal value of the logarithm of z2 so that's what we want to show now over here uh, the main uh, our main task is basically to prove that okay so which which can be proved using this uh, given condition is basically the principal value of the argument of z1 z2 or the principal argument is going to be equal to argument of z1 plus principal argument of z2 so this holds so uh, we can we can easily uh, show this thing using this condition okay so this is a very uh, simple exercise for you okay now uh, using this condition uh, this uh, uh, our aim can be easily proved because we can easily use the definition so this is going to be equal to log of z1 log of okay into z2 plus uh, iota the principal value of the argu argument of z1 z2 now using this condition uh, we can easily see that this is going to be equal to log of z1 log of modulus of z2 plus iota the principal argument of z1 plus iota the principal argument of z2 now over here uh, once again uh, we can easily see that this thing plus this thing is uh, nothing but uh, principal value of the logarithm of z1 and uh, again uh, this value and this value gives us uh, the principal value of the logarithm of z2 okay so that's how we can easily uh, prove this thing so this condition holds under some uh, uh, condition okay so this property uh, for the principal uh, value of the logarithm holds under this condition this is the end of our uh, discussion in this uh, discussion uh, we uh, observed further properties of uh, the multi-valued logarithm and the principal value of the logarithm